Hello, Loyola friends. Excited to talk to you today about housing selection. It is that time of the year again as we enter February, and we have a lot of information to share with you. Uh, it's an exciting time. But it's also a stressful time. So I am hopeful that this presentation will give you uh, some peace of mind and give you some strategies for how to approach your selection process. Let's go ahead and get started. So I wanted to start this presentation with a reminder that you are not alone here. We are here to help you. So the room selection guide is like a 50 page document. You can find it online. We're also going to be emailing students in the very short term so that everyone can have access to this document. It's going to include some very specific um, uh, images, screenshots. It'll have uh, even more questions answered. It'll have some hyperlinks in it. It's a super handy, useful tool. So if the only thing that you do is use that guide, you will be able to make it through selection just fine. Uh, in addition, we will have some videos throughout the application process. And of course, your friendly neighborhood residents, life and housing staff. Uh, I'm talking about your RAs. I'm talking about your uh, the grad students, the area coordinators, especially the central office here. We are all going to be trained to talk through this so that we can help you and your questions. These are some of the most important dates. Now, you may want to take a screenshot of this. I'll smile. I'll pose for a moment so that you can catch me in it in a good spot. Um, February 1st is when housing accommodation requests were due to disability accessibility support services. Now, they will continue to accept, but by this point, you really need to get in that application process if you are interested in a housing accommodation through that office. Uh, phase one is officially open. It opened yesterday on the 5th. Students are able to submit their housing application phase one. Phase one is going to close February 19th. It's an important date because after the 19th, you may put a get a hold onto your registration and it will become difficult to register for classes. I emphasize that because it is so important that you get through phase one, no matter what type of return to campus or return to Loyola you're thinking through, whether it be an off-campus student, an on-campus student, a broad student, even if you're transferring away from Loyola, we're sorry to see you go, but we still need you to do this application. Uh, and you're, you will be directed to subsequent pages that are relevant to you. Phase two will begin on February 21st. Phase two is called group formation. Um, and we'll talk about group formation. It's probably for students, the most stressful portion of the process, but we have a lot of handy tools to take some of that stress off. The first of our two roommate socials is Tuesday, February 27th. And then we have a second roommate social on Tuesday, March 12th. So that's right before spring break and then right after spring break. Phase two of the housing selection is going to close on Friday, March 14th. So just a couple days after that second social. At this point right now, you want to be thinking about who am I going to live with? What are my plans for next semester? So that you are not deep into the beginning of March when you are first thinking about roommates. Now is the time to be sort of putting your feelers out, but we'll get to that too. April 3rd is an exciting day. That is when you find out when you will choose your housing. Um, you will find out what date and what time your group will be choosing. The three different selection dates are April 12th for rising seniors, April 16th for rising juniors, and April 18th for rising sophomores. And then the last note on important dates is that we will confirm the assignments as you've chosen them, and we'll also share some move-in information on April 26th. So let's start talking about phase one. The start of phase one is your personal application. Here's how to start it. So I'm not gonna go step by step by step, but I grabbed some screenshots from the housing selection guide so that you can see how to find these things. Once you can get to room res, you'll find the housing applications portion at the top of the heading, and you will select apply for the 24-25 academic year. The first part of the phase one is the updating personal information. You're going to verify that we have the right emergency contact for you, that we've got the right missing person contact for you. You may want to put somebody else on that list. You also might want to change your cell phone carrier or your cell phone number with us. This is the place to do that. It's also the place where you're going to do your residential intent. All students, and again, I repeat, all students not graduating in this May 2024 are required to do phase one. And depending on how you select your intent response, will direct you to a different uh, next portal page. 
So as an example, if you're planning to live on campus for the fall semester, you will select that I intend to live on campus for the fall semester. If you plan to live off campus or you're commuting from home, you will select I do not intend to live on campus for the fall semester. Studying abroad in the fall, the same answer, because you do not intend to live on campus for the fall semester. And then lastly, if you're transferring or not returning to Loyola at all in the fall, then that is what you will select for that option there. Your housing contract, if you are going to be a residential student, will begin with a page that looks a little like this. You're going to see your student ID field, right? There's a space for you to type in your ID, and that will be the signature for the housing contract. Please remember that your housing contract is, is, a, is a binding document, right? So we'll talk a little bit about what I mean by that in a moment, but when you sign this housing contract, you need to be sure that you intend to live on campus because I have great news for you. This year, residential students um, will not pay a deposit. Yeah, they, there is no $300 housing deposit, nor is there a $300 tuition deposit. And if you're thinking that you just saved $600, yes, that is what I am saying to you if you are a residential student. Uh, very excited to share that news with students. Also in phase one is you'll update your roommate questionnaire. This is, uh, this is your familiar from previous iterations of this application. It's um, how do I feel about sharing? How do I feel about visitation and guests? How do I feel about uh, cleanliness? Please be accurate. Please don't blow through this. Please take it seriously because this is the compatibility that other people will use to find, uh, to find you in the portal to look for you as a roommate or that you will use to find other people. And it is always better to be honest here than it is to be um, aspirational, right? The resident that I hope to be. No, this is who you are. Be honest with yourself. If you're messy, say you're messy. It's going to work out better for you and the person that you may find instead. Also included in phase one, you'll decide on whether or not you want renter's insurance. Same as previous years, it's an opt-in or opt-out process. You'll choose your meal plan for both semesters. And now I know you're thinking, if I'm not going to be here for the spring semester, we will cancel your meal plan, right? We're not going to hold you to that. You'll consider if a community agreement type of housing is right for you. The first two examples I can think of, substance-free housing and global connections housing. If you've got questions about what those are, they're in the selection guide, as well as uh, something that we can talk you through with Residence Life and Housing from our office. Once you make it to the group formation hold page, the big stop sign there, you successfully finished phase one. It shouldn't take you too, too long to do this, but it is necessary and it is due uh, February 19th, or there will be a hold on your registration. Once phase two opens, you're going to return directly to the same portal, to the same application that we brought you to the first time, and you will continue from there. So this is really, this window right now, between now and the 19th, is when you should be discussing with your families and your support figures what your plans are, right? Is it still the best course of action for you to be living on campus? Also, we wanna remind you that you can put a bio about yourself and then people can use that to find you and they will get a sense of what you're like to live with. You might wanna include some personal interests, involvement on campus, uh, your major or minor. Uh, we find that students who put bios in their roommate questionnaire response tend to find uh, better matches because there's a little bit more information that somebody can use to find you or that you can use to find someone else. Another reminder, is that if you're not living on campus, right? If you chose one of those intents to not be on campus, you don't sign a housing contract. Please don't be surprised if you are not navigated to the contract. We only want that to be for students who are committing to being here for the fall. And since we don't have a deposit anymore, that is the method that we will use to determine that you are interested and you are putting your, uh, putting your, your foot in the door for us to give you housing for the fall. You can change that intent through the phase two deadline. So that might mean for you, I'm not so sure if I'm ready to commit to living on campus, but I know that it's due February 19th. If that's the case for you, then you should submit your application as maybe intending to live off campus just as you wait to, or just as you learn what is the right move for you. And then you can change it back before the end of phase two so that you can be visible in the group formation search pages. And I'll explain that also in just a moment. That housing contract is binding. 
do not sign another agreement until you are released from the housing contract. That's very important. Uh, we see students who occasionally make that mistake and they will sign another lease with an off-campus property while they are still in the agreement with Loyola. Um, and please do let us know if your plans are changing, right? If you're making alternative plans and you're not sure how to fix that, please connect with us. Thank you. Let's go into phase two, shall we? This is the part that probably raises the most stress in people's minds. So I've added a couple of slides here with some visuals to help people. There are two primary roles in group formation. There's the group leader and then there's the group member. There can be only one group leader. That group leader has a bunch of important stuff to do. Choose someone responsible. Do not choose your, uh, your, 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 uh, your slacking off friend, right? Choose the friend that is going to show up for you, that is going to be on time, um, the person that you're going to hold accountable because they have a lot of they have a lot of important responsibility for you. They're going to come up with the name of the group, right? So you will see in the top right corner, I have an image. That's what it looks like to create a group. Only the group leader should create a group. Group members are going to wait to join that group. They should not also create one. If two people create a group, they are no longer visible to one another in the roommate search portal. So please keep that in mind. Once the group leader names their group, they can begin to invite people to the group. They must also verify that group. If you don't verify your group, verify that these are the humans, this is my group, we might not be able to consider that a valid group, right? We need you to emphasize that this is your definite plan. This is important stuff. Uh, and lastly, the group leader will also be the one to select beds, specific bed spaces, the specific apartment or suite that you will live in during phase three. So again, choose somebody important. You can change this person with our office after you've made a group, but you'll need to contact us directly to do so. That second role is the member, right? Group members only have uh, a couple responsibilities, one of which is to verify that you intend to be in the group that you're in. So you verify your own membership in the group, right? So after you either join the group or if the group met leader adds you, you must visit the portal and verify that, yes, this is where I intend to be. You'll see in the bottom left, I have an image here that shows you uh, the hyperlink to join a group. And then on the right side, you can use that sort of that eyeball to, to identify, am I listed here? Am I one of the people listed in the group? That is how I will know, okay, good, I'm in the right place. It'll say the group name, it'll show the group leader. And when you see your name in there, you know that you're in the right spot and then you'll verify. Here's some reminders about roommate groups. Um, complete roommate groups are essential. It's not just because we like even numbers, it's because the, the size of the unit that you're able to find in phase three is directly dependent on the number of people you have. So roommate groups of two will only see bed spaces with the size of two. Groups of four will only see apartments that allow for four people, et cetera. There are no such things as three person and five person apartments on our campus that you can search. So the complete group is necessary. Um, and you may want to think about using one of the roommate socials to help add just that one last person, right? If you've got a group of three and you need a fourth person, maybe the social is a way to find that extra person, right? Maybe you're looking for them through classes, through other friends, et cetera. I also want to add a reminder here that only students who complete phase one, who have finished that, can be added to your group. The number one reason why a group leader is not able to add someone, the number one reason is because that person has not finished phase one yet. That is where the group leader might need to badger uh, that group member a little bit to finish, the, uh, to finish the process so that they can be visible to then be added. Um, I mentioned that folks will need to verify their membership. You should all be listed under the same, under the group name that you intend to be part of. When you get to room selection hold page, probably another stop sign, you've completed phase two. Um, every student should be a member of a complete roommate group. It is, not, uh, it is not viable to go random as a Loyola resident because there are no single type rooms, right? Back to that, uh, back to that verification of how many uh, people can fit into a space. There's no such thing as, as a one. So you need at least two. Notice how I also included that there's very limited and limited numbers of twos and eights. 
we will do our best to crunch the numbers and do the math ahead of time. Because if we don't think that there will be enough of a certain sized group, by the time that your group may select in the portal, we will notify you. We will let you know that we have unfortunate news. We need your eight person group to divide either into a six and a two or a four and a four. And that's a hard conversation and nobody wants to believe it will happen to them. So if you are a rising sophomore and, you, and you're and you gonna be in a group of all sophomores, I don't recommend that you go and look for eights and twos. Those will very likely be selected by a senior or a junior uh, identifying group. Um, when you make it to phase three, only the group leader has anything to do there. The group leader will be able to select the specific apartment and then the specific assigned bedrooms for you. And I'll get to that a little bit later. Um, any other group member who visits uh, the portal during phase three will just see uh, like a, a confirmation page. It'll be sort of waiting to be housed sort of, uh, sort of visibility. And then every time a group member cycles in or cycles out of your group during group formation phase, you're going to get an email about it. So we want everybody to be informed of who is coming in and who is coming out of a roommate group. All right, finding a roommate. This is where this is the time to be talking around your classmates. Talk about your talk with your roommates, your suite, your your floor mates. Um, identify you know. Who might be looking for people? Maybe you and your direct roommate click so well, but you don't want to live with your sweet mates again. It's a good idea to start to poke around the floor and see who else might be in a similar situation. Your two and their two might make a fantastic four. We also have four tools for you within the portal. And I love these tools. They are huge. The first one is a search for roommate by group. That one allows you to select uh, the type of maybe filter by the size group that you're looking for. Let's say you'd like to live in a six because you'd like to have a good chance of living in a three bedroom apartment somewhere on campus. You can also search by group name if you know the, the name of, uh, of the group itself. Your next search tool is search for roommate by detail. You can use uh, you can look for age. You can look for specific class year. You can also look for bio, right? I mentioned earlier, you can search for specific keywords. So if you're looking for uh, Ravens fans, you might want to type in Raven in the bio and see if anybody has written that they're that they're a fan um, in that group, sorry, in their bio. Um, you may be looking for a specific major or maybe you're an athlete looking for somebody um, who is uh, who is also an athlete. Those are all things that people might include in their bio. So you might want to search that way. You can also search for roommate by profile. These are filter tools based ex explicitly on the roommate questionnaire. So if, again, cleanliness is very important to you, you may want to use that filter to identify only residents who have the same uh, mentality of cleanliness as you. Now, I do want to caution you. Please keep your filters to two or one. Once you get to three filters and more, you're really excluding a huge number of people that you may very well have good common uh, commonality with. So stick to one or two to have the greatest number of, uh, of positive matches. And then lastly, suggest roommates, probably my favorite tool. It's a one click button and it's gonna show you compatibility match like this image in the top right corner of the screen here. You'll see a direct match percentage based on your questionnaire and their questionnaire. You can add them to the group directly there. You could view their profile to see what the rest of their responses are. And you can also send them a message. Now, I'd also recommend that if you're going to send a message, you also use uh, Outlook or maybe use their socials as well. But this is a way to get in touch with that individual to see if they already have plans. Our goal here is to help everyone easily and, and readily find roommate groups. If you feel like you're going to struggle with this, talk to your RA early on. Talk to your area staff, right? They might be able to help you find somebody. Remember, the, the socials will be coming up soon, um, and your RAs can also plan some programming around mingling with one another as well. You just need to ask, right? Raise your hand and have somebody help you out. Here are those two social dates that I mentioned. You're going to find more information on the bridge as we put more detail in there, which is just as a reminder, it's Tuesday, February 27th, and then Tuesday, March 12th. They're going to be in the evening, uh, right after dinner time, but there'll be more information shortly. They're going to be held in McGuire, which is on the second floor in the student center. All right, let's get to phase three. Lottery times. Now, this slide has a lot of info in it, so I'm going to be thorough as I talk through it. 
So on April 3rd, your group will be sent their lottery time. Everybody's got the same lottery time in the group. It does not change person to person, but your group will have a lottery time specifically. These are randomly assigned by class year. In there, in there, there's a bit, a bit of weight to it based on the number of people in your group that are of the same class year versus a, a younger class year. So each group is assigned by class year, a rising senior group, a junior group, et cetera, et cetera, determined by the eldest graduation year. So the room selection dates are as follows. April 12th are for those that include one or more rising senior. April 16th is, will, will be the date that groups of one or more rising juniors will select. And April 18th is the date that complete groups of one or more rising sophomore will select. Now, what do I mean by weighted? What I mean is, let's say you've got a group of four seniors and a group of three seniors and a junior. That group of four seniors will be weighted slightly better in their housing time than those with the three, three juniors and sorry, three seniors and one junior. Um, similarly, if you've got a group of three juniors and one sophomore, you're still going to choose on junior selection day, but you will have a slightly uh, a slightly worse time of the day because uh, the sophomore changes the weight of the uh, of the group. Only the group leader is the one to choose, right? So you are picking, again, somebody responsible, right? Somebody that you can rely on. Uh, that is their job. They will choose the specific bed for each person. So your group leader also needs to have a clear understanding of who's going to live with who if you get into a two-bedroom or a three-bedroom or four-bedroom space. If your group leader is unavailable to choose, and it is a very narrow window, I will share it is a 15-minute window where the group leader will be logged in at about the same time as maybe 10 other groups of group leaders, all choosing at the same time. So you want this person to be awake, caffeinated, right, in the right place at the right time with good Wi-Fi so that they can be in the portal and selecting the room that is a best fit. Um, on the next slide, we'll talk about how to prepare yourself, right? So that you have lots of backup options. Um, but if your group leader is not available on the day and the time that we email you, we can't give you another time, right? That would sort of uh, sacrifice the fairness of our process, but you can indicate a different group leader from your group who, who is available during the time that you've been, uh, been offered. Let's talk about preparing for room selection. Okay. So, it's really important that you, have, that you discuss multiple options. I think this is a really helpful slide that gives a nice visual of what types of units are available in each building. If you wanna take another screenshot, now is a good time. Again, I will smile so that you catch all my good sides. You are looking specifically for the type of unit that is the size for your group, right? So if you have four people, but you would like to live in a Villa, Bellarmine, Claver, or Dorothy Day, you will not be able to select any of those buildings. Those buildings are for six people only, right? So it becomes very important. The size of your group dictates the building and the space that you can select. There's going to be a document that you will receive a little bit later uh, in March called a room types document. And that's going to be super helpful to identify other um, more nuanced aspects of the room types that we have on campus. Students that have been here for a couple of years, you know, few doubles look exactly the same, right? Few triples look exactly the same. And that document is gonna help you make some decisions. Um, don't forget, the group leader has to add these bedrooms to their cart, and I will show you exactly what that means right here. So your group leader, on the day of selection, in your 15 minute window, and, uh, and I guess I'll, I'll sidetrack for just a moment, if your group leader is not available, let, let's say, because uh, we're going to be watching that login, right? We're waiting for that group leader to log in during their time. If that person is delayed by like more than just a few minutes, we're going to call them. We're going to call one of you as group members to see if you can get in touch with them. And then as a last, last ditch effort, we'll try to send a human to their room to try to knock on the door to get them to, uh, to, get, them to get into the portal. It is just too important to miss out. Let's get back to the slide. Step one, you'll choose the building you wanna live in. You're only gonna see buildings of units that match the size of your group. So you don't have to worry about selecting the wrong building here. Step two, you're gonna see all of the available units. 
We get students every year who will call our office frantically within that 15 minute window to say, I can't find the apartment I'm looking for. I'm sorry to say that probably means that it was selected already in that what's available in the portal is what is available for you. I wanna make a note about all the filters on the left side of step two, that, that, um, uh, that quadrant here. Be wary of selecting too many filters at a time. You may slow down your selection process, you may time out, and you may have to log back in and start over. Uh, I've seen that happen because there are a lot of people accessing the portal at the exact same time, frantically using these tools. So just please be wary of, uh, of oversaturating your filters here. Step three, you'll assign the beds. There'll be a drop down for each member of your group. You will choose which person is going into which bedroom. And the last step is to confirm. It will show you a screen of who you have identified to go in each bedroom. And there will be a confirm uh, as well as a thank you page afterwards. So if you've got questions about the halls themselves, right, and are curious to see what they look like, we have video tours, we have photo tours of each hall each room type on the housing uh, website, looking for residence halls. You also you know, can, can uh, check in with your classmates and other friends. Hey, what does your room look like? I, it's, this, is, this is the time to be uh, asking people, hey, do you mind if I see what this room looks like? I've never been in Macaulay. You know, I've never been in Bellarmine. Uh, me and my friends, we want to live on the west side of campus. We want to live on the east side of campus, uh, but we don't know what it looks like and you want to get an eye for it. Um, you know, be polite, right? Ask nicely. But most people are pretty accommodating and will invite you in if you are uh, if you can give them some notice for it. Here are a bunch of frequently asked questions. Now you may have questions on your own, but um, let me try to get ahead of some of them right for you. So I have three slides of frequently asked questions here, and there's a lot of text on these. So forewarning, uh, I'm going to be talking at you uh, using some of these bullet points. So if you have a house accommodation or you need one, the deadline has passed, but DAS is the office that you will speak to to, uh, to be seeking a housing accommodation. This is a separate roommate placement process. DAS will share with our office what accommodation it is that you need. You will tell us, who do I wanna live with? And then we will place you. And phase one will be the end of your application. You will not do a group, a group formation process. You will not do a phase three uh, room selection. Um, your process will be adjacent. You'll do phase one. You'll be working with housing and DAS, and you'll be offered a placement. And there really isn't any navigating or negotiating the placement that you are offered. How about if you're applying to be, uh, or when you want to live with an RA? So. Again, a separate process. The RAs will be given, uh, as part of their employment contract, they're going to be given uh, the option to live with specific humans. The RA will identify who those humans are, and they will submit that to residence life and housing. You are not creating your own roommate group. There's no need for this. Phase one will be the end of your process, and living with the RA is the in that space is where you will be assigned. How about if I'm the group leader and I can't make my lottery time, right? We talked about this. You can change your group leader. You need to talk to us at Residence Icon Housing in a timely manner. Please don't wait until the last day if you can avoid that. Uh, but things happen and we're gonna be looking to help you out. What if I'd prefer to live in a single? So Loyola has only limited units across campus that have singles in them. For example, Newman has a couple of weird apartments where it's a three bedroom apartment. One of the bedrooms is a double, one of the bedrooms is a single, and one of the bedrooms is a triple. So as your group, group leader is navigating the selection portal, please be attentive to the bedroom letters and numbers associated with that bed space. So if those are available for a human, you can select that as a single, right? But that is all that we have in terms of single spaces. Um, another example is, uh, is, is the Rahner Village. There are a few Rahner Village apartments where it is two single apartments and then a double apartment uh, for four people in total. What if I decide I want to live off campus after the phase two deadline? You must seek to cancel your contract once it is signed. Once you've signed it, we're assuming that that's your plan, right? That you've committed to the university that you intend to be here. So contact us before you make those alternative plans, right? I mentioned uh, students who might have signed a lease in addition to the Loyola contract. Um, that has put you in a very bad spot. What if I'm returning from a leave of absence? Where do I fall into the housing process? 
Students on a leave of absence should be participating in this fall housing process. If you are eligible to return to housing in the fall of 2024, you will participate in housing selection this semester. Even though you're not currently taking classes and you're not currently a resident, you will participate in this process. The next three questions are about study abroad here. What if I'm currently abroad and I want housing for the fall semester? Very similar to those in, with a leave of absence. If you are currently abroad, you are going to complete the same process as students who are currently here. Everything is electronic. You can access all of the forms during your in your time zones, but you need to be attention to those deadlines because they are relevant to local time in Baltimore. And if you are getting close to that February 19th deadline and you're not sure um, if you're going to be uh, hours of time zone ahead or hours of time zone back, you may want to be aware of that and do that phase one earlier than the 19th. What if I have a friend I want to live with, but they're going to be abroad in the fall? We get this question all the time. We cannot hold bed spaces for students that will not be here in Baltimore in the fall semester. We recommend that you be discussing this amongst your roommate group and potentially come up with a plan where one resident who plans to study abroad in the spring is in your roommate group. So they'll live here in the fall and then in good faith, they believe they will be leaving in the spring. There is a process in December, November and December for those that are returning from abroad or returning from a fall leave of absence, for instance, they can request housing based on availability and based on current vacancies. And so if we believe that that space is going to be vacant for the spring semester, we typically are able to help that student be placed in the room that they want as long as that fall resident is in fact leaving for the spring. Now, we're never going to give that person's housing away, right? We're not going to hold students to their, their, uh, their common agreements. Um, we are going to respect the housing contract and we're going to respect that students have been in that placement all fall. And if they intend to stay there for the entire year, we will back them up in that. How about if I'm studying abroad in the spring semester? Students on the Evergreen campus for the full fall semester will participate in this process, right? Because we are talking about your intent for the fall semester. Even though your contract is good for the full academic year, you'd select, you'll, you'll, select a con, you're, you'll sign your contract for the fall and the spring of 24 and 25. You're choosing a meal plan for 24 and 25. And then once it is confirmed that you are studying abroad, that you are departing housing, we will cancel your housing assignment, we'll cancel your meal plan, and there'll be no, no penalties, right? The, the university is aware that you are not returning in the spring semester. Uh, same for graduating students. If you're graduating in December or January, very similar, right? We are, uh, partner offices are communicating with us and there would be no penalties. Now, I wanna make a note about the deposit here. Um, we are currently working with campus partners um, on a plan to identify the housing, uh, sorry, the tuition deposit for those that are going to be living off campus. Um, so if you are a student that is concerned about paying this deposit to live off campus as a tuition deposit, right? This is the deposit that guarantees I intend to study here and I, I promise I'm studying here. That is, there's also a study abroad tuition deposit. It's the same concept. It's that I will be going through Loyola to study abroad. If you use the portal today, February 6th, you'll see that the tuition deposit is still part of the flow. However, if by the end of this week or the beginning of next week, something has changed, you might see something different in the portal. So at the time of this recording, there is a tuition deposit only for those that will not be living on campus um, but that is something that could be subject to change. But I wanted to mention that as well, because it's a question that people may have. That is the end of my presentation for all of you this evening. Really appreciate you watching. Uh, for those that are watching the recording, thanks for taking the time out of your day. If you've got a question not listed, please contact us at residencelife at loyola.edu or call us at 410-617-5081. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll take some Q&A if there's any from the audience, uh, and then we would end the webinar shortly. Thank you again. If you have a question that I've not yet answered, or if something uh, has, has uh, landed on you funny and you're hoping for some clarification, I uh, would really love to, uh, to hear from you um, so that I can try to answer in this Q&A. 
I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that we're just a little bit bigger on the screen here. So the first question that I see is, are roommate socials separated by class year? That person probably remembers how we did it last year. Last year, we did separate where, uh, where it was hour by hour. Now, we are still working on our plan for the programming of the roommate socials. So I don't want you to quote me on, uh, on that plan just yet. The bridge will, uh, will be updated with the plan for those nights. So we'll be very clear and transparent a little bit later in February. Uh, right now, we're working on uh, the catering for it. We're working on um, the tabling spaces, the type of activities we want, because there were some pros and cons to last year's socials, right? Like uh, people were served. Um, there were uh, dozens and dozens of people the whole time. Like uh, um, we served over 200 people. And that led us to think, OK, let's get a second webinar. Or sorry, get a second uh, social in the books. Um, but we want to make sure that we plan it so that it feels uh, intentional and actionable for folks. So that's a good question. Thank you so much. Um, next question I see for housing in the spring semester. How does this process work for students that are going to study abroad in the fall and return in the spring? I sort of answered that question, but I'll reiterate here. Um, so there is a end of semester pull in day concept where our office is made aware of which bed spaces will become vacant because of study abroad, um, because of leave of absence, withdrawals, uh, graduation, right? So we will know of upcoming spring vacancies. There is an application for spring only applicants that will be for the student of this category, right? Those that are returning for the spring that are studying abroad in the fall. In that process, you can identify who you ideally would like to live with or live in proximity to. We can't always guarantee that you'll be exactly in the unit that you want, um, but we'll try to get you as close to there as possible. So I hope that answers that question. Another really good question. Since you can change your residential intent through phase two, can you also change whether or not you wanna live in an intentional living community or substance-free, global connections, et cetera? Yes, yes you can. Phase one will still be open for you through the end of phase two because there are students who are going to be changing their mind about whether or not they uh, they intend to live on campus. So we wanna make sure that the whole application is, uh, is available uh, as well. Um, so if you've changed your mind about a type of living agreement, um, and something that I would like to address now, this question is so good because it reminds me of something else I want to mention. Um, I mentioned that the number one reason why people are not able to see one another in the, um, in phase two is not completing phase one. The other, like I'd say the number two reason is folks that have signed an agreement do not see other people who have not signed the agreement. So if you want to live in substance-free housing with particular people, all of these people need to sign the substance-free housing agreement. Um, that is that is uh, the number two thing that we see consistently for troubleshooting that seems to help people the most is just to verify, oh, okay, it looks like one of your group members hasn't signed this. You may want to talk to them about whether this is the kind of housing that they want. Um, so another reason why we need to keep that portion open all the way fa through phase two. Thank you for asking that question. Students who have a disability or want to register for a accommodation will go through disability and accessibility support services. So DAS at Loyola.edu, their physical office is located on the first floor of Maryland Hall. Um, they are the office that will work with students uh, and they will collect paperwork. They will speak to uh, potential doctors and caregivers to identify um, what is the need regarding housing. Um, occasionally, a student's accommodation may be for um, a classroom specifically, additional test taking time, uh, specific lighting or, uh, or, or the um, the, the, the way that an exam is taken, for instance, uh, not all accommodations will lead to a housing accommodation, but DAS is the office who will tell us, and they are discreet. All they tell us is, here's the type of housing that this human needs, and then we will then work with that person uh, along with DAS to figure out, okay, are they able to have roommates, yes or no? And if they are able to have roommates, who do you want to live with? 
If a person does not identify anyone else that they choose to live with, housing may uh, place someone uh, or some ones into the other bed space if a person is given its designated single. And by designated single, that can mean um, one of those bedrooms that I mentioned that are designed for one human, but they also could be, uh, depending on the accommodation, perhaps it's a proximity to bathroom, that might be a, that might be a need. We would put a student uh, in a double that is vacant, and then we would close off the other bed space so that the accommodation can be met, right? We do, we do prioritize how we can serve those students. Thank you for that question. I think this question is asking if residence life and housing offers opportunities for students to kind of buy out or own uh, a space uh, in different halls. Uh, no, Loyola does not offer that as an option. I know some campuses, some universities do have that as an option, uh, but at Loyola, we think living in community and having roommates is the best thing for young people as they develop and, uh, and, and they travel through their college experience. Um, so the only way that a student can be guaranteed a single is through disability accessibility support services, or if their lottery time allows them to pick one of the units that has that type of single space, like I mentioned before. Uh, and then uh, a question about intentional living communities. So in the past, Loyola has offered students the opportunity to apply to create an intentional living or an intentional learning community. Um, an example of that is the the black and gray housing. Uh, another example was a, uh, a Catholic intentional living community. Um, uh, students could uh, could apply for uh, like an LGBTQPIA plus affirming uh, community. Um, they really could take any number of shapes and forms. We believe that we're going to be offering a, a greater intentioned Messina living community for first years next year. Um, for the fall semester, which we're excited about. So that partnership with Messina will certainly be growing. Um, if a intentional learning community is uh, is decided upon, and at this point, I would say if you you and a group of students, and there will be a, uh, um, a necessary number of students in order to get the, the, the cluster of housing that you're seeking. It cannot be just one apartment or two apartments. We'd be looking to create like a section, like a full community. Uh, because then we would assign an RA who is intentionally trained to work with that community. Um, so if you or a group of students are interested in an intentional learning community, you should be reaching out to us as soon as possible. Because at this point, we've probably uh, reached the end of, uh, of the open opportunities and you'd be looking to uh, speak to us directly. So if you have a concept for a learning community at this point, please reach out to us directly, residencelife at loyola.edu, uh, and be prepared to have numerous students, like think uh, you know, greater than eight, just like off the top of my head. Um, I would not say that that's a number that you should like um, be committed to, but it, it should be something that is more sizable than just a couple apartments. That was also a good question, thank you. So I think I'll wait just another moment, for a couple moments, for any other remaining lingering questions to uh, to make their way through the Q and A. Looks like somebody's curious about already existing uh, living learning communities. Um, there were not any students who proposed a learning community other than the one that the university uh, had offered. So. Um, to my knowledge, there will not be an additional community created unless, of course, something like is pulled together very last minute. So uh, if that was something you were seeking, like if you were waiting until you look at group, uh, sorry, uh, phase one and you were looking to find a community there, the only communities that would currently exist would be um, the, the, the standard, right? Substance free, all gender housing um, and uh, global connections. Those are the three typical uh, and, and consistently offered communities, but we didn't have uh, student proposals this year that uh, that we were looking to or that were we were able to approve. If students have interest, we're, we're open to it, uh, but please, you need to contact us very soon as phase one has already begun. 
Oh, and then I suppose the Messina community, uh, but that is not a one that current resident students would be able to opt into. Uh, that is one that would be intentionally for the incoming first year class. Okay, then I think at this point, we've reached all of the Q&A that folks may have. Um, I wanna appreciate everyone who's been in here today and everyone who is watching from, the, from their own comfort place. Uh, looking forward to answering any other questions that you might have by reaching out to our office or coming in person. Always happy to help talking to your RA, your area coordinator, your grad students, um, your other, you know, community uh, partners on campus, right? Direct them uh, and they, they will direct you to us as you uh, seek them out. Um, so at this point, we're going to close our webinar. Thank you again. Have a good rest of your night. Take care.